majority of patients with cerebral amyloid angiopathy do not present with symptoms that are the consequence of the microangiopathy, but with symptoms that are the consequence of the inflammatory response to the amyloid. And it is important to know this entity. This is an example of an elderly woman presenting with seizures and no focal neurological deficits. And if you had not seen the previous slide, you can think with this flare image with extensive white matter abnormalities of vascular white matter abnormalities, if you think it's symmetrical of a metabolic cause, but if you also look at the gradient or SWI images, you can see the cause of the abnormalities that are the microbleeds. And on post-contrast images, you can see the consequences, the inflammation with enhancement of the leptomeninges. This is a case of cerebral amyloid angiopathy related inflammation. And in the previous brain bit by bit, I mentioned that in cerebral amyloid angiopathy, there's involvement of the leptomeningeal cortical and subcortical vessels that are continuous and one network. And in this amyloid angiopathy, there are two subsets of inflammation that can occur. The first one is inflammatory CAA, which has an autoimmune component and which is mainly located perivascular, whereas the amyloid beta-related angiitis resembles the primary angiitis of the central nervous system, so the vasculitis. And this is often a granulomatous inflammation that is transmural and involves the vessel wall. Also an imaging, these two entities resemble each other, but the primary angiitis occurs in younger patients than the amyloid beta related angiitis, which typically occurs in the seventh decade. An MRI is not a microscope, so it might be difficult to distinguish both inflammatory forms of the CAA. This is a case of inflammatory CEA, where you can see on flare areas of vasogenic edema proven on DWI with involvement of the cortex and subcortical white matter, enhancement of the leptomeninges and microbleeds on the SWI in this woman in her 70s presenting with dysarthria and impaired walking. The abnormalities can also be much more extensive, resembling press, for example in this case where the leptomeningeal enhancement gives the clue to the inflammatory uh, pathology in CAA. And sometimes there are no white matter abnormalities, but there's only some leptomeningeal inflammation, for example in this case of Abra. There was a study published in 2016 where they looked at 54 patients with ABRA CAA related inflammation and CEA and they found that if there is leptomeningeal disease with or without white matter abnormalities this is more in favor of ABRA. And ABRA responds better to steroids than the primary angiitis of the central nervous system as you can see nicely in this case of a 57 year old man with um, extensive abnormalities in his right hemisphere and also motor symptoms. You might even consider a tumor, but you see the abnormalities and the microbleeds on the SWI and they did a biopsy which showed edema surrounding the vessels and there is some amyloid in the vessel wall and also a lot of white blood cells and macrophages surrounding the vessels. So this was a case of ABRA that responded very well to steroids with both an improvement in clinical symptoms as an improvement on MRI. These are two other histology proven cases. The first one of inflammatory CAA with abnormalities in the right temporal lobe 
you can see a normal vessel wall here, and this is an immune staining for amyloid, with amyloid in the vessel wall. And this is a case of Abra, where you can see that the vessel wall is very abnormal, and you can see the amyloid and the transmural inflammation of the vessel wall here. And because of the involvement of the anterior temporal pole, you might have in the differential diagnosis of these two cases, also CADASIL, which occurs in a special group of patients because it's autosomal dominantly inherited, and we are going to talk about that next time.